workers join unions for many reasons, including higher wages, better health and accident benefits, contractual provisions that ensure a safer workplace, greater job security, and a voice in the workplace. Let's take a look at the history of labor relations. Skilled craftspeople were the first workers to unionize. The first unions in Sweden were formed by printers. In Great Britain, the first unions were formed by building and printing trade workers. All these unions were formed because the people in these trades were concerned about the competition they faced. In some trades, the ability of skilled workers to move from one location to another affected wages within their industries and led to the formation of local unions. The local unions prevented tradespeople from other parts of the country from coming into a certain locale and bringing down wages. Since the early days of labor unions, strikes have been used to achieve unions' objectives. Workers who continued to go to work during a strike became known as scabs, and their names were shared among local unions in an effort to ensure that they were not employable. Union members refused to work with non-union members, and would even refuse to interact socially with them or live in the same boarding houses with them. By 1873, union membership had reached 300,000 in the United States. By 1878, however, membership was down to 50,000 due to the Depression. Then, in 1886, the American Federation of Labor, the AFL, was formed, and unionism began to increase once again. Still, it wasn't until about 1933 that unions became firmly entrenched in the manufacturing sector. This helped fuel an upturn in union membership. A pro-union president, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and new legislation made it easier for workers to unionize and played a major part in this upsurge. In 2015, union membership in the United States reached a record low of 11.1%. This percentage was the lowest recorded by the Bureau of Labor Statistics since they began collecting the data in 1983. In 1983, union membership rate was about 20.1%. Many reasons exist for this decline in union membership. Globalization has resulted in many traditional union jobs being moved to other countries, with manufacturing particularly hit hard. As manufacturing has moved abroad, U.S. job growth has occurred in the services sector and the small business sectors and other sectors of the economy that have historically been less likely than others to organize. Add to that the reluctance of local unions to spend money on organizing efforts, something that has traditionally been their responsibility, and you have a recipe for decline of union membership in the United States. This decline is not just, however, a U.S. phenomenon. Critics of unions say that employees don't support unions today because they're able to individually reap the benefits unions used to provide them. Data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics suggests otherwise. For instance, in 2014, union members were paid on average $970 per week compared to $763 for non-union members. This spread of 27% has remained fairly constant since 2000 when the Bureau of Labor Statistics started tracking this wage data. Union members typically pay 1-2% to of their salaries to their union. That's a small price to pay relative to the benefits members reap.